Greetings all and welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at the Pimax Portal, an Android based handheld gaming device that generated a lot of buzz earlier this year. I am extremely intrigued by this device as it is a hybrid system that claims to run all types of games, from emulated to Android, streaming and even VR games when you buy the additional headset that is available. On top of that, it has some top tier hardware at a very competitive price. This video will be a quick overview and summary of most reviewers' experience with the Portal. First up, let's look at its design and specs. The Pimax Portal stands out with its detachable controllers, like the Nintendo Switch and the Lenovo Legion Go. You're either going to love these or hate them, but in my view their wireless nature is a definite plus. The controllers connect via strong magnets and Bluetooth, and right out of the box Pimax warns you to be careful of pinching yourself when connecting them. The plus side of this is that reviewers confirm that they do not fall off the unit when shaken, so you don't have to worry about the one side dropping to the floor while holding it in one hand. The unit has teardrop shaped buttons on both controllers, even for the D-pad on the left. This was a downside for most reviewers as the sharp points of these cause some discomfort, especially during extended play sessions. The portal has 5.5 inch 4K display that runs at 144Hz in VR games but is capped at 120Hz for other modes. It runs a customized version of Android 10 and features a Snapdragon XR2 chipset, along with 8GB of RAM and 128GB to 256GB internal storage. The battery is reported to last between 4-6 to six hours depending on what you are playing. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, but unfortunately no 3.5 inch headphone jack. This is not such a big deal for me as I would prefer Bluetooth headphones anyway, and if you really want to hardwire audio, you can use a USB-C to 3.5 inch jack converter. The portal has four external cameras on the corners for tracking in VR mode and one central camera on the back used for augmented reality games. How's that for a long list? This unit is truly jam packed with features. Which begs the question then, do you know what's the difference between a Swiss Army knife and the Pimax portal? The one can open anything, the other can play everything except maybe itself because the buttons are too pointy. <laughs> Just had to put that one in there for a slight break. But on a more serious note, let's look at the performance on the unit. With its powerful processor, there really isn't much that the portal cannot run. It runs all older emulated games seamlessly and does well with PSP, PS2 and GameCube games. The high resolution screen coupled with the powerful hardware allows you to scale the graphics in these, making them look crisp and smooth. According to the testing done, it will even run some Switch games, but emulation of these is still in development. So your limit here is going to be the emulation software available and not the hardware on the portal. Streaming games on the unit is reported to run brilliantly, if you have an equally impressive internet connection. And you will be able to run even the most demanding Android games natively on the unit. The VR experience is a mixed bag though, with some finding it surprising and pleasant, but others saying that it still needs work and is not as smooth as it could be. With Pimax's commitment to continually updating the unit though, I am sure this will get better over time. With that said, we have to discuss the pricing on the unit, which in my opinion is quite competitive depending on what you're looking for. If you want to buy one of these, you have a variety of options. The base unit is the Portal Retro. This is just a handheld though, and does not have detachable controllers or the cameras for VR, but it still has a 2K resolution screen and that impressive chipset. It generally sells at $199, which is cheaper than the Odin 2, although it has comparable performance, which is amazing in my opinion, especially considering that the unit was on special at the time of creating this video at $149. The QLED version of the unit comes in at $399 standard, but at the time of this video it was selling at $349, which makes me think it is at least competitive, but still a hard sell considering that you could get a Steam Deck for $50 more. Sure, the Steam Deck would not be able to play VR games, but it has a much wider range of games that it can play on the go, even though it does not have such an impressive screen either. Thinking about it, I think that very few people will want to buy this unit for VR, especially considering the fact that the headset and controller holders will cost you an additional $99, making it much more expensive than something like the MetaQuest 2, which is currently selling at $249. My recommendation would be to opt for the $299 unit with the detachable controllers, as this would give you the benefit of those wireless controllers, 
the power of the XR2 processor and the brilliance of the 4K screen. If you want the VR experience, you may get lucky in future if Pimax manages to get the VR aspect of the unit fully up to speed, but I would rather look at something like the Quest 2 for VR on a budget. That's it for this video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you found some value from it. Links to all the products mentioned are in the description below if you want to purchase. I will also leave some links for the source reviews I talked about if you want more detail on the portal. If you're interested in handheld consoles that is comparable to the Pimax portal, check out my overview on the AIN Odin 2 by clicking on the link on the screen now. As always, have a nice day and I will catch you in the next one.